Okay, here we go. From Creepity, Chloe and Hal, Tiny Desk Home Concert. Let's listen. <laughs> Ah, so Chloe and Hall are a sister duo. Chloe's 22, Hall is uh, 21. Hallie, Hall? Uh, they write, produce, compose, arrange all their songs as well. Together they have drums, guitar, piano covered. Uh, I love their dynamics, a use of color, and of course, the harmonies. They also act. They shout to the new live action Disney. Shout, or shout out to the new live action Disney Ariel. Oh, very good. Cool. Hello, Tiny Hi. Desk. I'm Chloe. And I'm Hallie. And we're so happy to be Good. here with you Thank all you. virtually. We want to welcome you all to our world. This is Don't Make It Harder on Me. Ariel. I'm guessing that Hallie, Holly is uh, Ariel for the Disney. Now that, and while we're paused, wow, this is so fun. Their voices are so fun. Almost all female band. I was gonna say the same thing to Minnie Lou. Yay for the all female band. Almost all female band. Or is it all female band? Yay for the all female band. Hell yeah. Um, I was gonna say. So Chloe starts out, right? Chloe starts out with, enjoy your dinner, D drummer, dinner drummer. Is it a drummer? I, I don't know. I don't want to assume anyone's gender either. Um, Chloe starts out with this amazing, like, it's a very breath-filled, easy mixed sound. And it doesn't restrict any of the timbre from the low portion of her voice and the flexibility of going up into the highs as well. It's it has a really nice natural vibrato in it. You can have vibrato without sounding like an opera singer, right? This is a beautiful example of that. And it's even vibrato. And it's great. Hey, welcome back, Yap. It create it sets this wonderful stage for these two voices to come together with. Yeah, this is very late 90s early 2000s vibe which I think is kind of that it creates that feeling that's like kind of heartwarming almost. At least for me, that's like it's very nostalgic feeling, a very nostalgic sound for me. Also, I love Chloe's sweatshirt. That's very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely unreal. Uh, let's listen for a little bit, and then I'll talk about kind of what makes these voices come together in a really nice way. How many girls you What's up, Lisa?
okay, so this is this is a long video. We're gonna go through the whole thing. Well, let's just let's just do it. The entire concert. Let's do it. Um, okay, so we talk a lot about contrast every once in a while here on the stream. Like, what what is contrast in art, right? It it's it's things that complement each other in a way where one has something the other don't doesn't. One has something the other doesn't, right? At a very atomic level, keeping it simple, right? There's a lot of beautiful contrast between Chloe and Holly. And it's because Chloe brings this warmth, this depth, this breadth to the and breath to the sound. And Holly's voice kind of s- sits in that groove with a with a crisp clarity that is a very iconic sound. I mean both of them are have very unique voices, which is lovely to hear. But they complement, and then they're sisters, so there's this similarity there on the top of it that makes them blend really nicely. But they sing in a way individually that's just totally different. You know, Holly's clearly more of a like a su- soprano, more of like a clear uh, cutting sound, and Chloe has that mezzo warmth of her sound that that complements it very nicely. And it's those two contrasting aspects that make for a wonderful listening experience when they're both singing together. And it's a combination. It's not just a natural, uh, it's not just a natural thing. It's, it's not something that just happened. It's, it's clearly also involved in the choice of how they were singing and how they trained themselves, how they became trained and how they, they worked together to, to create this awesome sound. Yeah. Majestica, I l- you're, see you're you're someone who loves music for for what music really is, and it's the joy that's created by performers that an audience can engage with. And look at the look at their faces here. This is like the perfect pause moment to really en- just feel that warmth and joy. And I'm excited because we're we're what twenty percent through this concert, and we're just gonna we're just gonna keep rolling because this is this is a duo that's making music in a really exciting way. It's not the same style that we usually listen to here. But it's it's joyful. It's different. And it's something that I think everyone can kind of get behind. And I'm just excited to talk about it more. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. You're that welcome. Thank you. That was fun. That was really fun. Oh, wow. Well, I'm happy to be here at home style, right? This is so cool. Yeah. So this next song I'm about to sing, it's called Baby Girl. And I know this year 2020 has been absolutely bonkers for all of us. Bananas. And for those moments where you kind of feel less than and like you're not good enough, that's why we wrote this song for ourselves as a mantra to let ourselves know that whatever happens will be okay and that this is our world. And yeah, so this is Baby Girl. I love it. (laughs) Yeah, before we go on, I love what you said, Adrian. There can't be light without darkness. They're playing with value, hue, saturation of the sound. Yes, that's exactly it. And they both have their own different ratios of all of those different qualities. There's that clear crispness. Crispness.
This is a really great example of of uh, tension and release in music, and how we have two individual artists who stand alone as as really really fantastic uh, artists, individual artists, like I just said. But then they come together, as you said, Adrian. I love this comment. You know, you, I couldn't have said it better. They blend the sounds of colors that they individually have perfectly, and they fill in their own color spectrum. They they split apart and create these atmospheres, and they come together like nothing ever happened. Yeah, there's no boring moment in this song. And I was I was thinking also how this it's not following any like set structure. You know, it starts out with a little bit of a story, a background behind the feeling, uh, a prediction into the emotionality of the song, and then it just kind of explodes into that that what we get now this beautiful spectrum this tension this release this coming back together combination and separation of these individual voices it's really lovely this is one of my favorite songs yeah. they're just switching it up moving fast cuz the uber on the way taking pictures make sure you can see no lays that week secure pick the money in the safe And and this is a great example of you know what we just listened to of of Holly utilizing her voice. Her voice is much more suited, in my opinion, and I you know we could all differ in opinions. In my opinion, her voice is more suited for like that solo sound. Um, whereas Chloe has that same sound as well. I, she has she has a solo ability. She has the solo sound, but just in a different way. What when. when Holly opens her mouth to sing. It just kind of like cuts out. It cuts through all of the rest of the noise, and you're just like, "Oh, there she is!" Damn. Um, I don't think the Becca. I don't think the larynx moves very much at all, especially for either of these singers, because they're not they're not drastically utilizing their range in a, in a crazy way. It's more like, um, 
they're relying they're really just in their bodies and you can see how by their movement and the comfort that their their body is driving the sound it's not a it's not a crazy laryngeal feat anything they're doing and and honestly with most singers there's no real crazy laryngeal activity going on it's it should never be conscious from the larynx what they're doing right the rhythm and narrative are things that keep the vocal explosions together, if you ask me. Yeah, I like that I, I like that idea a lot. Yeah, enjoy your 420 big brain nuts, soybean gang. So then what's also cool about Chloe's singing or no sorry Holly's singing is that she can also just pull it back and not not be that center focus voice. She can create those sounds that are really uh that really complement Chloe's voice when Chloe is in is in the spotlight, when she is in that front and center mode. Um and I, I know a lot of the stuff I'm talking about is really just about performance practice, but when you have a duo like this and especially in a situation like this where it's a live uh or it's a live concert or it's a live live streamed concert it's all about that cohesiveness in the duo why that duo is making those impacts i mean they're vocally they're both absolutely stunning so now we have to talk about the relationship and what we get as the duo why aren't they individual artists because the whole is greater than the sum of its parts if you ask me give some of that gestalt theory right Hey, Tay Tay One of the great things about them being siblings is that they really just like get each other, and you can hear that especially when uh, Chloe's rapping and Holly just kind of comes in. Yeah, and you can rehearse that in, but you hear this natural comfort that comes together. Yeah, sisters often sound great together. Yeah, because it's an anatomical thing. You know, I talk about the components that go into a voice all the time, and a large part of of the things that you can't control about your voice are your anatomy. The thing about people, you're, the voice is something that you can get. It's passed down to you from your parents, and, and you can share a similar vocal anatomy to your siblings and people you're related to, uh, and that comes across in the sound just as much as anything else, and this is a great example of that. You can, ob- you can obviously blend <laughs> people who you're not related that was to. so but. fun. Okay, so this next song that we're about to sing is the title track of our album, Ungodly Hour. And I know we all have our good days, our bad days, and our in-between, but don't we all want somebody to love us during all of those moments? Yeah. And that's what this song is about. So we hope y'all enjoy. Hey. This always makes me happy. Yeah. (laughs) These chords. Nice. Hit me with your eyes. I never seen that kind of view. You're walking over here. The way that it went down, that's when I knew We'd be talking all night But I could tell you need to work on you, you, you Like you, you, you Like you Like you Oh, oh. You'll be playing sweet But baby, don't you know that talking 
How common is it for female singers to perform without shoes? I don't know. Becca, that's a good point. You realize the way Chloe is moving while while sitting looks like an ab workout. To sing this way, you have to be so on top of your ab game; it's crazy, right? Are there opera? I don't know the connection between opera and bare feet. I'm sorry, I'm a master of disaster. <laughs> uh, the way they're singing, you know, it. Yes, I guess it could look like an ab workout. There's no back to their their seat or anything like that they're on their tiny desk you know their medium sized desk I guess I, mean, I think that's about the same size as my desk that might be a little bigger than my desk actually um, <laughs> besides the point um, this singing this way is all from the abs you can't sing with this much clarity and ease without motivating the breath with the abdominal muscles uh, that's like kind of a yeah total thing uh, yeah it's really, it's great hearing them come together, man. I, I mean, I've never listened to these singers before. This is the first time I've heard them. And it's it's so clear their chemistry is absolutely empowering. One thing that a lot of people who watch this, who've watched this channel before, watched the stream before, um, you know, think about Flora and Marco and their duet and their chemistry, right? And they're not related. They don't have similar voices at all. But what brings those two voices together is the immense amount of contrast and yet virtuosity that each singer brings to the table. Um, an individual solo artist has their moments, right? But if you bring them together with a singer who's completely different from them, but is able to work with their voice and make it into a, a type of sound that is ex like that you can hear, that you can feel with someone else, it's yeah, it's it creates another really impacting moment. Angelina Jordan always performs barefoot after be uh, befriending a young shoeless girl while traveling when she was six years old. I mean, that's. <laughs> That's super deep. I love it. Um, and I also know that Aurora performs without shoes. I think it's I think it's a personal preference. I know people who prefer singing without shoes because you can feel the ground better. But if you have a, a, a life-changing event like that, that's also a wonderful reason. It's involved with your story, with you as a human, with you as a performer. Um, it's a really beautiful way, reason not to have shoes. I wonder why they're not wearing shoes. There maybe is a really cool reason behind it. Uh, it makes you continue to think about them as artists, right? When you decide you like us all about it. When you decide you need some more all about it. When you don't have to think about it. Love me, I'm That's strange, sir.
Yeah, the cozy home vibe might be cool. All right, all woman band confirmed. We love it. We stand all women bands. That's great. That's fucking beautiful. There was a deaf girl who sang barefoot so she could feel the vibrations of the rhythm via the stage. I want to see that, please. Thank you. If you could send that to me, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, Yeah, the vibe is so good here. I love it. We're really on our last song right now? It's our last song. It's the last one. Oh, oh, man. Mm. Well, you know, we like the tea. And I feel like that's exactly why we wrote this song, because we always wanted to hear a song telling the perspective of the other woman and what does that feel like. Mm -hmm. And when oh, the guy shoot. goes back to his other woman at home, does hole. the lady know about the other girl? Yeah, like, does she know? And it's like, what happens? What do you do? Like, I wouldn't know. Like, what would we do in that situation? Mm -hmm. I wonder what she thinks of me when you're coming home. I know that she smells my perfume under your cologne. Dude, this is the 2021 Disney princess sound. If I if I understand correctly, she's playing the next Ariel in the live action uh, Little Mermaid movie and and this is the sound, like, this is the proper evolution of that sound, in my opinion. It's beautiful. I wonder what she thinks of me when you stay away. After you make love to her, but I'm still on your brain. I'm not the first type, not like the other guys. I wish you all the best. I'll help you pick a dress And you can both go to Paris You live in the lavish I'm actually happy for you So tell me, tell me, baby I know this is crazy You've done this before So who are you to judge me? Me? It's never wrong when you're in love I what she thinks of me When she sees that one on your neck, oh no, I didn't mean to go that far I wonder what she thinks of me when she sees my name Voices are so good. This also the story is heartbreaking. I never, I will never, I have never understood this perspective. But it's this is kind of an ex, just an example of using your voice as a storytelling device, right? That will effectively transfer someone's life circumstances, their their story, right? That's what the voice is for. And I love that they're creating such a... They're not just saying the words on a melody, right? A little bit of that before, but it was also about the beat. This is a whole new... I don't know. It's just a, it's just a deeper, very unique version of of their the story that they're trying to tell. They're using their voices as that paintbrush purely. It's beautiful. Yeah, they're sisters. They are sisters, um, Chloe and Holly. All my heart is in, you tell me everything. I know you don't forget how much you needed me. And while you do enjoy Paris, your loving is careless. But it's not ever with me. Tell me, tell me, baby, I know this is crazy. You've done this before, so who are you to judge? Crazy. You've done this before, 
crazy Tell me you love me Cause I just wanna be your baby Well that's the price I gotta pay I wonder what she thinks of That, that like uncapped optimism and empathy in the character that they're singing about is like so heartwarming. And then the mode that they deliver it in, that that true like un again, uncapped vocal freedom that they're bringing to it. Like this is what good singing is all about. Utilizing those technical abilities to really give you an emotional story. Absolutely unreal. Lisa, I'm sorry you're not feeling well. I hope you feel better. Um, and hopefully, you know, the music can be a great medicine for you. But yeah, delightful is such a word. And and being the other girl is such a dark place to be in. Um, it's disappointing. It's it's all, It can be embarrassing. I, I would imagine, you know, it can be all these difficult things. But they've... Man, it's this is a really unique perspective that they're allowing us as the listeners to get a window into their, you know, take on the story, take on the, the perspective of being the other girl. Capital G good. Capital M music. Should that be our hashtag? I found out we were stealing someone's hashtag. Maybe we could use capital hashtag capital M music. That's kind of stuffy. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Hashtag music. Um, but yeah. Oh, it's such a this is this is great capital M music, I will say. It's applying the technical skills to a unique and personal delivery of a story that really just makes you feel something different. It gets me like choked up talking about it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. That was really bye. fun. Oh, bye. That was quick. What an emotional roller coaster. Okay, guys. Wow. That was really lovely. Hey, you're still here. I hope you enjoyed that look into what we do on Twitch to celebrate great singers. You know, I owe you a huge thank you for being a part of this awesome community and letting me share my love of singing with you guys. The growth on this channel has been absolutely immense. And while I can't read every single comment requesting reactions, here's what you can do to get your favorite songs featured on the channel. You've got three options. One is to join the Twitch stream Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. When you've logged into Twitch and are watching the live stream, you can type exclamation point react, followed by the URL of your requested video. This adds your song to the queue that we work through during live streams. Alternatively, if you're really in a rush to get me to react to your song, you can head to my tipping page in the description down below and request a song with a tip of $4 or more to get it seen ahead of all the non-tipped requests. Don't worry, I make sure that every dollar gets put towards improving the channel's content and the community. The third way to get your request up on the channel is to join my Patreon. A patron of any tier level can request a song and get it reacted to that month, guaranteed. There are tons of other fun perks too, so I hope you check it out anyway. Thanks for watching. I hope you feel closer to the human voice and the artists you love, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Ciao. Tip turquoise. <laughs> you. Are you so cute? Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so cute.